Oakland Stadium, the home of the Denver Broncos. And today they host the Washington Redskins in ideal weather conditions. It's hard to believe it's December in Denver and it's 53 degrees. Those are the teams who have clinched the playoff spots. Chicago, the Giants, these Redskins, and these Broncos, who are the AFC Western Division champions. That is the final score. We could have added the Jets to that list, but they lost to the Steelers today, 45-24. Chuck Knoll is 9-0 in his career against the Jets, so they'll have to wait a while. Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall. Washington and Denver, they're both in the playoffs. Denver, the champion, the Redskins, definitely the host of the wild card game in the NFC. With me, of course, is John Madden, and you go in with those uh, thoughts and those credentials about both of them already being in the playoffs. What about Washington? What do they really have at stake? Well, you know, we talked to Joe Gibbs last night. He was mad, and uh, of course, they lost to the Giants last Sunday. We talked to him Friday night. Now, that's a long time to hold a mad, and he's held it that long. And the way you can tell he was mad, he said, he said, I want to see what we do tomorrow. And that's the way a coach talks when he's still upset. And I think what he wants is he wants to see how they're going to bounce back today. I think he hopes that they bounce back in a big way. He says, because we'll probably be the wild card team. He said, but we don't want to be going downhill as we go into this game. He said, we want to be peaking because we know one thing, that the team that we have to play in the wild card is going to peak because they have to win the next two to get in the wild card. And that makes sense to me. I've always felt that the team that is playing best at the time, the team that is peaking, is a team that will go the farthest in the playoffs. John, what about Denver? They've won the AFC West. Now they're playing for the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. How do they approach this game? I think Dan Reeves was a little less mad than Joe Gibbs, but he was mad too. And he says, we have to take over control again. He said last week against the Chiefs, we didn't have control of that game. By control, he meant field position. He said, we can't give these Redskins a short field. In other words, we can't have the turnovers the way we did last week. He said our defense has to control their offense. We can't give them the big play. And then on offense, we have to be able to run. We have to get the running game going. We have to throw that short passing game, that ball control. So what he wants to do is they lost control last week against the Chiefs. He wants to get it back here today against the Redskins. Steve Cox will kick off for the Redskins. Ken Bell and Gene Lang back deep for the Broncos. Watching Cox in the warm-up, he was kicking him out of the end zone. Of course, we are a mile high, and the ball does go a little bit further. The shot goes back deep into the end zone, almost out. Gene Lang bounces it, downs it, and they'll start from the 20. John Elway will. He'll face the Redskin defense. That is a four-man front. Charles Mann, Butts, Darrell Grant, and Dexter Manley look for him to have a big day. Daniels, Olkowitz, and Malat, the linebackers. And the secondary, Green and Morrison this week, the cornerbacks. And the safety men, Jordan and Dean. Winder and Wilhite. And Elway back to throw on first down. Bat it down. The big paw of Dave Butts got up there to knock it away. The Denver offense, Elway the quarterback, Winder and Will Height the runners, Vance Johnson and Steve Watson start wide. Up front, stuttered Bishop Brian Cooper, Lanier and Joey Hackett starting at tight end in place of Clarence K. Orson Mobley, number 89, is now splitting out wide to the right, and we'll see a lot of him today. Two wide receivers left. The handoff to Will Height. To Winder. With Will Height blocking. A gain of six. Curtis Jordan. Alvin Walton, by the way, is the other safety man for the Redskins. Third and four. And now the Skins make their wholesale changes on what they believe to be a passing down. Winder comes out. Will Height remains as the lone running back. Sampson comes in and they go with four wide receivers. Elway wanted to make sure everybody was picked up. Incomplete intended for Vance Johnson. Everybody was not picked up. I tell you, here's the pressure. Here's the first thing that we say. 
as we see the blitz coming from the outside one safety coming to stun in the middle no one picked up the safety blitz that was Todd Bowles who plays the safety and a linebacker they didn't pick that up they did have some guys free down the field though that Elway didn't see Mike Horan the third Bronco putter punter of this year back to kick to newly activated number 80 Eric Yarber for the Redskins they lost both their kick returners last week in that defeat against the Giants. Some pressure on Horan. He gets off a good left-footed kick. Yarber signal fair catch. Steve Wilson. 47-yard punt. No return, and that'll get it done. There's the Redskin quarterback. Jay Schrader in the defense. He'll be facing. And who knows how it'll line up. Rulon Jones, Cragen, and Townsend normally up front in the three. Ryan Mecklenburg, Ricky Hundley, and Jackson, the linebackers. Right and Harden, the cornerbacks, Dennis Smith and Steve Foley, the safety men. But they do a lot of shuffling and changing. Anthony Jones and Donnie Warren line up on the right side. They start with two tight ends. Hand off George Rogers behind the line of scrimmage as he hit by Ricky Hundley. He was the first man there and a gain of one. The Redskin offense, Schrader the quarterback. Rogers will be the lone setback. Monk and Clark wide. Warren and Anthony Jones start. Jacoby McKenzie in place of Russ Grimm, Bostic, Tealman, and Mark May. Dan Reeves over on the sideline talking to his offensive unit. Second down. Rodgers again. Mike Harden the first man there with Hunley again. And Rodgers only got two. He'll go out and Brian will come in. What the Redskins are trying to do is get back into two tight ends. That time they had Anthony Jones in the backfield along with Rodgers and he and made an eye formation. He was leading, but he didn't block anyone. And I know what the Redskins want to do. They want to get back in here and pound at these guys, and they have an idea, but the players aren't carrying it out. Ricky Sanders this time split out wide to the left, Monk in the slot to the right. Bryant goes in motion. Warren stays in the block. Schrader out of the pocket. Pursued by Broncos. Fires in the direction of Art Monk. But there are Broncos all over Jay Schrader. Freddie Gilbert was the leader of the pack along with Rulon Jones. You know, the interesting thing about this start, Pat, it's the same thing that happened last week. When they first started going back to pass against the Giants, they got big pressure. Here they started again. And the same thing happened to the Broncos against Kansas City big pressure. And of course the Redskins had that blitz. So they're just starting up where they ended up last week. Maybe that's what they were talking about when they said we got to get back on positive track. Cox. Back to punt standing at his own 15. Will Height will okay, return right, for okay. Denver. Okay. He's got room. Handle it. You heard okay. Gerald Will Height gets outside the 35. Sean Burks. Down to make the tackle, a punt of 45 yards, a return of 12. So they net 33. Nothing, nothing at Mile High Stadium. Jay Schrader, the Redskins' outstanding young quarterback. And he really does seem to be very much in command of himself and the whole concept of what they're trying to do. He really is an impressive guy for only right, right, right now he started for one year and as you say he, he seems to have control of the whole deal. First and ten Broncos at their own thirty five. Elway back to throw. Watson and yes Morrison the defender a gain of eight. I'll tell you, this Steve Watson is a guy that's been catching passes for eight years for this Bronco team. He's always been the big guy, the guy that always gets open, the possession guy, the guy that third down pass, you need the first down, you need the touchdown. They've been looking to him for a long time. Gene Lang now in the backfield with Winder. Orson Mobley spit, split wide to the left. 
Elway, Delang, Winder. Sorry. Back close to a first down, stopped by Rich Mallott. That's going to be, I believe, close enough to measure. You know, one of the things, uh, you know, Pat, since the Broncos don't have Clarence K in there, they're using two tight ends. One is Joey Hackett, number 85, who we see coming in now, and he's going to be the blocker. Then when they want to run or pass, then they put Orson Mobley in 89. Now they have both of them in at this time. But they're trying to use Mobley, splitting him out and trying to get the strong safety out of there so they can run. On the other side, they have Rimsburg and Studdard together. Elway quarterback sneak. I think the Redskins jumped offside. He got the first down in any case. Of course, that was a short yardage play, so then they had three tight ends in on short yardage. But on regular downs, they're either putting Hackett in or Mobley. Now, since Rimsburg was the tight end, Stuttered has to come out for a play, is that right? Yeah, right. Stuttered became the tight end. Outside. So then Stuttered has to go out. First down. And Rimsburg has to stay at least one play. Rimsburg has to play one more play. Elway looking over to the sideline for the signals. All the plays are called from over there. Watson goes wide to the left. Johnson is split down wide to the right. Winder is the lone setback. A couple for Sammy Winder. Charles Mann. You know, Dan Reeves was saying to us yesterday, you hear all, they're stuttered back in, yes. Was saying you hear the publicity, the Valley who is about Manly, he said he was more impressed with Charles Mann. Yeah, and he was impressed with the speed of Charles Mann. He says, you know, he said he watched him on film. He said he never heard much about Mann. He said, but the more you watch, the more you realize that this guy is some pass rusher. Will Height is behind Elway this time. It's Johnson on the move. Mann is loose. The ball is loose. The Broncos come up with it. Stuttered, I believe, made the recovery. Almost looked like Mann kicked that ball out of Elway's hand. I was going to say that. That was Charles Mann on the rush there. He'll be going against Ken Lanier, but it looked like he did kick the ball out of there. Look, he's coming to the top left of the screen, number 71. Billy Bryant tries to get him. I think he stuck that left foot out there and just popped it out. Hey, the Broncos got a big break there in recovering. It'll be third and 20. The Broncos from their own 40. Mark Jackson this time split wide to the right. Elway out of the shotgun. Redskins chasing. Man the closest. Elway. Kenneth Mobley. Incomplete. Barry Wilburn was the closest Redskin defender. See the side judge down there threw his hat. That means one of the receivers went out of bounds. And I think that was number 80. Mark Jackson went out of bounds. So with that is saying, when he goes out of bounds, yeah, you can see him right here, top of the screen, he was out of bounds. Now he can come back in to block, but he can't come back in to catch the ball. Of course, the ball was thrown to Mobley. See there, he's out of bounds right there. So the official throws a hat. He can't come back in and be a receiver. He can come back in and block, but he can't come back in and clip. I think he did. <laughs> I think so too. Horan back to kick. Eric Yarber. Back deep for Washington. They're trying to set up a return. This time it's another good kick. Yarber. Came out of the pack, almost broke it. Got outside the 20, about the 22. That punt was up there for five seconds. 47 yarder. Yarber brought it back 10. Nothing, nothing still. 847 left in the first quarter at Mile High Stadium. It's nothing, nothing. Some of the most avid fans in all of football. 120 consecutive sellouts here at Mile High Stadium for the Broncos. I know how avid they are. I've been on that other sideline many, many years. I tell you, they, they didn't like the Raiders. And they let you know about it. They didn't hold back, huh? No. First and ten. Terry Orr, 
Now in the game, that was Anthony Jones moving. Schrader fake. Intended Monk incomplete. Crossing. Rulon Jones applied some pressure. So did Mecklenburg. You know, it's a funny thing. You take a team like the Redskins that had everything go and they had a lot of confidence. The Broncos did too. And they both lose the game. And you don't just get it back that easily. I mean, I think that the, in the second half, I think the Redskins struggled last week trying to get it back. I have the feeling here in the first quarter of this game, they're still struggling trying to get it back. Again, they go with those two tight ends side by side to Schrader's left. And the handoff is to George Rogers. Rogers cuts back, comes close to a first down. Maybe got nine. Tony Lilly made the stop. Well, that's the type of thing that they wanted to get back. You know, some power running. What they did this time, they had the two tight ends on the left side. They're going to run to the left. Now, they're just going to block down because R.C. Thielman and Mark May, you see them 69 and 73. They're pulling from the right side to lead them. So you had the two tight ends blocking down at the point. Then you had Mark May and Thielman, the offside, pulling to lead Rodgers. Now the Redskins send in Russ Grimm, McQuaid, McKenzie, their biggest guys. What do they call this? They call it heavy jumbo. Their short yardage thing used to be called jumbo. Now with these guys, they got tons of guy in there. All the biggest guys in the team, they put them in. See McQuaid, 60. He's a tight end. McKenzie's the other tight end. Their guards and tackles put in all their offensive linemen, big tight ends. Other than Schrader and Rodgers will carry the ball. The smallest guy is Warren at 250. Third and short. Heavy jumbo. Schrader, long count, hoping the Broncos will jump. They don't. He rolls out, and he's got some room. Schrader's got the first down, out of bounds, in front of the Redskin bench at the 48-yard line, chased down by Ricky Hundley. Schrader almost fell down as he rolled out. What he did is, look, he got everything going this way. He faked and then did a naked bootleg out here. Now watch this side come in, and he gets free out there. But as you say, he almost fell down. Watch the fake there. Boom. The corner comes in, and Schrader outruns the outside. Dennis Smith had to do a quick change of direction, but Schrader picked up 16 and got the Redskin first down. Rodgers still the running back. Warren moves. Rodgers runs. And gets about eight before Mecklenburg trips him up. Officially, he got seven. This is the type of thing that Joe Gibbs wanted. You know, to be able to get down there and pound on something. You know, where you don't have to throw, you don't have to let them just come and tee off on you the whole game. Where you can run at them, pound on them, calm that defense down. He was mad last night. Second down and short. Two, two and a half. Rodgers again. And he's got the first down and more. Bounces down to about the Bronco 35 after a gain of eight. Again, it's Tony Lilly on the stop. Well, he's running right in there behind McKenzie and Jacoby. You see that? He starts in there behind that thing and makes a nice move there. Starts in, bounces out to the left side, and is able to pick up that first down. I'll tell you, I saw him in the hotel last night, George Rogers, and he was a determined guy. He wasn't smiling. <laughs> no, he said, I'm going to have one tomorrow. Well, they're going to give him a chance. Schrader, quickly outside Clark, who had it, lost it, and took a shot to the head. Dennis Smith on the coverage, and Clark was really hammered. Hey, that is a tough thing because he wasn't in a position to accept a hammer. I mean, watch him. He's down, and he's going to get bent backward. Watch him. He has to come down to catch the ball. He gets down. He's down on both knees, drops the ball. Then he gets bent over. You see what I mean? And he already has a pulled hamstring. And I bet you that's where the whole pressure goes as you get knocked back over that way. In fact, they're checking his ankle there. 
Well, he got bent back, so you never know what's got to give. Something does when you make that kind of move, doesn't it? Still Washington, Denver, nothing, nothing. 6.41 left first quarter. Gary Clark being helped to the Redskin bench. Obviously a problem with his left ankle, which was bent backwards. They said he was in that position where when he took that hit, something had to go. And of course, that's a big loss. I mean, oh Gary boy. Clark had caught 74 passes this year. Ricky Sanders has taken his place. Hand off Rogers, counter Trey. Rogers inside the 30, about the 28. Tripped up by Ken Woodard, a gain of seven. That old familiar Redskin play. Well, here's the thing that they do. You know, they take this offside, Teelman here, May here, and they're going to lead this way. Rogers takes a little counter step and gets right in behind him. See, now the offside will pull. There they go, takes a little counter step in there behind May. Gets that kick out and is able to get those couple of yards. Third down and three. Bryant has replaced Rodgers. Slater back to throw. Has to get rid of it in a hurry. But gets it to Kelvin Bryant. And Bryant is out of bounds at the Denver 15. Knocked out by Tony Lilly. A pickup of 14. He had to get rid of the ball because Ken Woodard, the linebacker, number 52, watch him, is real close to him. He comes free there, so he has to get rid of the ball. And he does the smart thing. He finds Kelvin Bryant, the guy who Woodard just ran by. I don't know if Bryant was supposed to block him or not. But that's the old rule. If the guy doesn't block him, then throw it to him because he should be open. At the 15, then. Rogers back in. Gary Clark leaving in the wheelchair. They give to Rogers. Rogers down to about the 12. Bryant was in the game. The two of them at the same time. There's Gary Clark. I'll tell you, there is a tough guy going off the field. And you know that the last place he wants to be sitting is in that chair right now. He's a real competitor. He's he's played at least half this season with a pulled hamstring. He hasn't been able to practice all week. He just watches, and then every Sunday he's been able to gut it out. You know, it's not always those big guys that are the tough guys. Sometimes the toughest guys are the guys like Gary Clark. Sanders splits wide to the left this time. Rogers is behind Schrader. Second down at seven. Outside of Monk. Monk is hit by Lilly just as soon as he makes the catch. Maybe he got two yards out of it. But here is where those Broncos really get tough. You know, they've always been that. They've always, the closer you get to the goal line, the closer this Bronc, the tougher this Bronco defense is. They've always been that way. That was one of uh, Joe Gibbs's concerns last night. He said, I hope we can move the ball, but the closer we get, the tougher they are. And of course, there's the architect of this defense, Joe Collier. He's the assistant head coach and the head of the defense. Clint Didier is in the game for the first time. He's in a slot to the right. Schrader. Down the middle. Touchdown to Sanders. From 10 yards out. I'll tell you, that's the way to do it. If you can't pound it in there, get the three guys out there. They put Didier in there. He has a broken hand. He missed the last two weeks. He runs an outside pattern. And you see Ricky Sanders, who just took Gary Clark's place, he runs the post, then you see, see Schrader drill it in there. And so the Redskins take the lead with 4.18 left in the first quarter. Zendejas to try the extra point. It is not good. Schrader was the holder. The snap appeared to be a little bit off mark. It looked, we'll like, look at it. It looked like Zendejas slipped a little, too. So the Redskins lead 6 0 with 4.18 left in the first. Here's Art Monk out here. Here's Didier here. But the guy that catches the ball is Ricky Sanders. Lined up in the backfield, comes up here, makes a real nice move into the post for the touchdown. 
but they lined him up in the backfield. Tony Lilly, number 22, is covering him. See that little move he made to the out? Lilly went out, boom, Schrader hit it right in there. Here's what happened to the extra point. The snap was behind Schrader. Sendejas just got there early before the ball was down. Cox to kick off, Bell and Lang back deep. Cox's kick sails through and out of the end zone. They'll bring it back to the 20. The Redskins scoring drive, 11 plays, 77 yards. They kept it four minutes, 29 seconds. And the Redskins, when they score first, the record is 36 and two since 1983. You know, that's probably pretty good, but I'll tell you another thing. I've always known when you miss an extra point, somewhere it jumps up and bites you. Winder is the lone setback. Mobley on the move. Elway has some time now, looks and looks and looks and finally guns it in the direction of Mobley. And when I say gun it, he can gun it. That's one thing, he throws it so hard, you always have the chance for two of them to get it. Here's the blocking here on Dexter Manley. That's Dave Studdard, number 70. Last week, Brad Benson made NFC Player of the Week Holy blocking him. Number now Studdard is going back. I'll tell you, they just called him holding for that. I didn't see a holding there. In fact, I'd like to see that one again. I think maybe when Manley went down, maybe they thought that was holding, but watch Stuttered. Boom, he's up in there. That's okay. Hand in there. That's okay. His hands off him. Oh, that's a bad call. I don't care what you say. Makes it first and 20. Well away. Hands off to Wilhite. And Dave Butts wraps that up. I'll tell you, Dave Butts wraps up a lot of them. Here Butts is right here, and when he gets something going there, you better slow him up before he gets started. Watch that, it just takes a little inside move. That was Mark Cooper trying to block him. He looked like uh, Cooper looked as if he was trying to get position on Butts. Yeah, you don't. The first thing you do on Butts is you got to tie into him. You got to stop that thing. You can't step for position. Position's not a factor when you're blocking him. No, I mean, he's so big, you, you already got position any way he goes. Mobley on the move. Elway back in his own end zone. Going deep. Intended for Mark Jackson. That was Daryl Green back there with him and right with him. I'll tell you, those are two of the fastest guys in the NFL. You know that Mark Jackson probably has more speed than anyone on the Bronco team. And of course, Daryl Green was in a race in the offseason and he was the fastest guy in football. So that could, if you time that, they, they probably ran as I was watching them here and, you know, just timing them myself. I think they ran 4-3 in that 40, both of them. I think you're right. Redskins have their pass rushing unit in there now. Hamill, Marcus Cook on the inside. Grant and Butts out. Here's Elway back in the end zone to Wilhite. He'll get some breathing room, but not close to a first down. Todd Bowles tripped him up, a gain of 13. Well, I'll tell you the thing that they did is they got some room for their punter. He doesn't have to stand in the end zone now. Of course, the punter's back 15 yards from the line of scrimmage, so he'll be just in front of the goal line. Wind, well, there isn't much. Seven miles an hour, they said, when the game began. But if you look up on top of the scoreboard, flags aren't moving. Horan. And all kickers love this altitude here. Oh, yeah. Your average goes up. All you have to do is hit it. Yarber back deep. Allen didn't turn over. Flag down. Yarber with room gets to midfield. Darren Como tripped him up a 45 yard punt. But let's see what the penalty is. Jerry Seaman is the referee. Well, it has to be that illegal block, wouldn't you think? That's a very popular one. Holding. Holding. That's the same thing. If you get in better position, it's a legal block. If you can't get in the position to illegally block them in the back, then you hold them. So. 
We have a post-possession foul, holding number 35 during the kick. First down. I think it was the guys out here that were trying to hold up the outside guy. It was Keith Griffin they got it on, and I think they were trying to hold out. You know, the only two guys can go down to the outside guys. And I think they tried to hold them up, literally. Washington six, Denver nothing. Mecklenburg this time as the Broncos go with four down linemen. Mecklenburg as a linebacker. They give to Rogers right side. And whatever defense that was, Joe Collier and his unit got the right setup. Tomorrow on CBS, don't forget that big match in New England, the 49ers and the Patriots. It begins with the NFL today, but both those teams, the Niners and New England, still in the playoff picture. Both need to win. And I'll tell you, the Redskins are probably going to be the wild card team. And Joe Gibbs told us one day, we don't want to see the 49ers again. Monk comes in motion. Again, it's counter Trey. Rodgers behind the two blockers from the other side, and this time Mecklenburg and company stack it up. The report on Gary Clark from the Redskins is that he has strained ligaments in his left ankle and will not return. And that indeed, as John Madden said, is a, a huge loss. That well, guy had been Mr. Know, Clutch. You know, and sometimes that sprained ankle is worse than a break. You always hear that, that it takes longer to heal than a broken bone in there. Third down and eight. Less than a minute left in the first quarter. Schrader back to throw. Gets it outside intended for Kelvin Bryant. Bounced off his thumbs. Steve Wilson was the nearest. Must have stung him a little bit. Schrader throws it hard, too. I'll tell you, watch Joe Jacoby block against Carl Mecklenburg. Here's Jacoby. Here's Mecklenburg. Jacoby does a nice job on him. Last week, he had a little trouble. He had a lot of trouble with Lawrence Taylor. Took some criticism for it. This week, he's getting Mecklenburg, but he's able to stay with him and drive him by and let Schrader get rid of it. Steve Cox, the punter. Will Height, that good kick by Cox. Will Height at his own 17. Room and blocks. He had one man to beat. That was Alvin Walton. And Walton stayed right with it. 52 yard punt by Cox. I'll tell you, that Gerald Wilhite is something for this team, Pat. He's, he's their leading receiver. He's a blocker. He's a punt returner. I'll tell you, just about everything he does. If it weren't for John Elway, he'd probably be the most valuable player on this team. And he's not that big. Uh, not to be a blocker. He got some good blocks on that return, though. I remember when he was the number one draft choice out of San Jose State. A lot of people thought the Broncos made a mistake. Watson was the move man. The handoff is to Lang. Straight ahead, and he got two yards. Daryl Grant tripped him up. Gary Clark, we told you, had strained ligaments in that left ankle. They've got it iced down. But, as John said, sometimes that can be worse than a break. And probably you talk about MVPs. I think Gary Clark has to be one of the MVPs on this team. Mobley split wide to the right. Coleman out there with it. Lang and nothing. Maybe one. Quarter number one is over, and the score is Washington six, the Denver Broncos nothing. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Strohs and Stroll Light. Now you're talking good times, and Strohs is spoken here. U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. And by Yugo, everybody needs a Yugo sometime. Stadium, the home of the Broncos. Pat Summerall and John Madden, the Redskins leading Denver 6 0. Broncos, who were 
had said to us yesterday in conversation Dan Reeves saying we have to be able to run the ball if we're going to win they have four yards rushing well they only have 15 yards of total offense <laughs> that, that's not the way they wanted to start that first quarter that won't get it done three wide receivers come wide to the left they're going with four on third down and seven Elway is going deep pass almost picked off as intended for Mark Jackson no flags are down the Redskins Barry Wilburn back in good shape just to go back to the injury situation as concerns Gary Clark it's not as bad as the first report that we had it's an ankle sprain but there is no ligament damage so that's encouraging uh, I think it's the same thing I think a sprain and sprained or ligament I think that's all the same thing the word is just that it's not broken it's a sprain and you usually what do you sprain I think you sprain ligaments and stuff you don't sprain bones Moran aiming for the sideline Yarber feels it fair catches it the Redskins will take over at their own 13. No flags. 40 yard punt. Redskins leading 6 0. Touchdown pass from Schrader to Sanders. Yeah, now there's Dave Butt standing there, sitting on the bench, relaxing there. You know, last week, the giant offensive line coach, Fred Hoagland, said that he's a, got a big old head on him, weighs 50 pounds. Butts got upset about that, called him pumpkin head. So he went and weighed his own head. And he said his head only weighed 12 pounds. I think it's more than that, though. I think uh, somewhere in between. I would bet closer to 50 than 12. Here's Schrader back to throw on first down, looking for Monk. A collision and a flag. And that looks legitimate. Dennis Smith, the defender. Oh, and then they threw another flag. Oh, it was the same Passing guy. Number 49 defense. First down. The same guy just picked it up and threw it down again. That was a double dipper, but looks like Smith gets there before the ball does. Well, that's pretty close. I don't know. I don't think that's as bad as it looked when they did it. Yeah, you know, because if he gets there first before the ball, he can't hit him. That looks like about the same time. That ball was thrown behind Monk. And into Smith, and Smith has a right to go for the ball. First down, Redskins, nevertheless. The handoff is to Rodgers. Rodgers cuts back inside, hit by Simon Fletcher first. And down he goes after a gain of five. You see Simon Fletcher come running down that line. No one blocked him. He had Rodgers all, all zeroed in, didn't he? Well, that really is how you beat that play, that counter tray, when they pull the offside lineman. You got to have somebody to count that guy chasing. And that's probably why they put in a Simon Fletcher because he has that speed and he can run it down from the backside. Second and six, 46. Schrader, a mix up. And all he can do is look for some daylight and doesn't see anything but orange. And so down he goes. watch it he turned the wrong way I think that was Schrader's fault because it looked like the ball was supposed to go to the right everyone else went to the right Schrader went to the left and he didn't have any guy there to hand off to so that brings up a third down and eight situation Kelvin Bryant in the game Monk goes in motion Schrader back to throw Monk spins away from one defender and gets another six yards out of it. Tony Lilly was the first defender. Hey, Monk is out there. He starts in motion, and he's going to be out there working on Mike Hart, number 31. He drives him up. He knows where the first down marker is, stops, hooks to the inside, works back to the outside, and he just knocked Harden off with his right arm. That was a defensive pass rush move. 
But I'll tell you, Schrader drilled that ball. Oh, boy. That's where you can tell the strength of a quarterback's arm is throwing the out. Haynes has replaced Harden. As the Broncos right cornerback, this is Rodgers at or behind the line of scrimmage and knocked backwards by the big crushers. You know one thing about this Bronco defense and Joe Collier, they play a different defense on every down. And most of these different defenses play different people on every down. So by the time you figure out who's playing where, the guy's not there anymore. There's a new guy there. That's one of the more confusing things about it. Different defenses and different numbers. Second 11. Later back. To Bryant. Kelvin Bryant inside the Bronco 25 and up for a Redskin first down. Ken Wooder chasing him. Bryant, the last couple of weeks, has really come on. I'll tell you, the other thing, you know, Joe Gibbs said last week he was waiting for him to come on. Last week, he thought he did come on. But I'll tell you, what Joe has to be happy with here is his pass protection. Joe Jacoby last week, as I said, he drew Lawrence Taylor. It was a long day. Now, today, he's drawn Carl Mecklenburg a big part of the time, and he's taking care of that business. First down at the Bronco 25 for the Redskins. They again move up. Schrader fakes, back to throw. Gets the screen pass out to Rodgers. Not many blockers out in front. Rick Dennison on the tackle. We're at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado. Ideal weather. Redskins scored on a pass from Schrader to Sanders. Then Zendejas missed the extra point. George Rogers so far has been busy, has 44 yards rushing, and the Redskins lead it 6 0. Second down and six at the 21 yard line of Denver. To about the 15 and about a yard shy of a first down, Ricky Hunley made the stop. You know, that was interesting how Monk came in motion, Pat. He starts here. As he's in motion, he's watching the secondary all the way. Then he goes all the way here, up, and in. He decides as he's going in motion and watching what he's going to do when he gets up there. Watch your motion. See him look. He's looking to see what coverage he's getting. Now he sees the whole inside, comes up, stops, goes back to the inside. Third and one. Rodgers will score. From 15 yards out, George Rodgers bolts into the end zone. And that was that heavy jumbo formation. They had all big guys. Look at those big guys. There's Rodgers. He's, he's the only guy that's not a big guy in there. He's the guy that's going to get the ball. Look at left. He has Donnie Warren, his tight end, in the backfield. He leads. Warren's the guy that got that kickout block. He, Rodgers was in there. He felt comfortable. He says, I got that big old heavy jumbo in front of me. I'm going to go jumbo left. He was looking over there, and he felt comfortable with all those big old guys. Rodgers is only 230. Zendejas. The extra point is good, but not really very good. Watch number 85, Donnie Warren. He's the tight end. Watch the lead here. The block. He gets, he kicks out. That allows the hole for Rodgers to go through. And that was a huge opening. 13-0 Redskins. Hey, we talk about Donnie Warren. He gets the good lead block here. Russ Grimm is the guard. He pulls as they fire down here. He pulls and leads here as Schrader gets the ball to him. Now watch this. Jay Schrader almost fumbled the exchange. There's Grimm leading and Warren leading. Steve Cox line drive kickoff is handled by Ken Bell. Bell had an alley and took advantage of it out to about the 35 before he tripped up by Dean Hamill. 
34 yard return. That's the Washington scoring drive that made it 13 nothing. Rogers 15 yard run 16th touchdown of the season for George. Denver's first four possessions have not been very lucrative. Four punts by Horan. Well, you know, that's what we talked about. That's the same thing that happened to them last week. Their, uh, their first series, they had something go wrong all the time, and Kansas City built up the lead, and they couldn't get back. Elway back to throw. Manley forces him up into the pocket. Flags go down. Elway comes out of there. Chased out of bounds by Darrell Green and Neil Olkowitz. He got seven, but that is probably going to be holding. That'll be holding against the Broncos, and that one will come back. Be interesting if it's against Dexter Manley. It'd be on Stuttered. That would be the second penalty Stuttered had blocking Manley today. Manley does get a lot of that, where the guy blocking him gets a lot of penalties on him. Illegal use of hands to the face. Number 54 offense. Still first down. Not Keith Bishop. Bishop would be the guy blocking Daryl Grant. You know, one thing about this, this line of the Redskins, they have big guys, Grant and Butts, in the middle. And they get to the push up the center. Then they have the fast guys, Manly and Mann, coming from the outside. All the way back. Manley chasing again. Outside intended for Winder, but Elway had a hurry. Manley with the heat. Tell you, Manley is starting to get it going now. I mean, he's rushed there. He just takes a bull rush into Stutter, pushes him by, and he's right there at Elway's feet. Usually he uses the speed and goes around. That time he just took on Dave Stutter, boom, and then got beyond him. You know, going into last week's game, he was a leading sacker in the NFL. Coming out of the game, he was second. Lawrence Taylor was number one. Second and 20. Will Hyde from Elway and a gain of 10. Ken Coffey made the stop. John Madden was talking a minute ago about all the things that Gerald Wilhite does. One thing that's not inclu included in there is blocking. I'll tell you, you know, that's that's why a guy is is so valuable. You know that it does those things that you don't always see, like the blocking when Sammy Winder runs it, the blocking he has to do on pass protection, receiving the return. You put it all together, and that's a valuable deal. Elway from the shotgun. For Mobley. And Orson Mobley comes down with it. Todd Bowles knocked him out of bounds. Mobley weighs about 265. There is an interesting guy, a 265 pound tight end who plays H back. And they like him because he's a receiver. You think of a 265 pound guy as a blocker, like another tackle. But this guy is a tackle who's running like a wide receiver. Elway this time had good pass protection. See, they keep Elway, I mean, they, they keep Manley off him just long enough for Elway to get rid of the ball. But that's a big target. I mean, a big old 265-pound 65 pound guy out there running patterns. He got 25 on that completion. Redskins showing blitz. Penalty markers down, pass is complete. To Mark Jackson Elway threw it going backwards. I think Dan Reeves was saying that sometimes Elway is like Houdini. I think he was like Houdini on that one. Neil Okowitz, the middle linebacker, came on a blitz. No one picked him up. Offside, defense, penalty declined, first down. In fact, they were offsides to get to the rush. And all Houdini going backwards got rid of that ball and completed it. The Redskins never really got set on defense. Manley was still moving around when the ball was snapped. And so was Milot. First and ten as they decline the penalty. Balls at the Redskins 30. Washington leading 13 nothing. 
Elway doesn't like what he sees and calls a timeout. He had 12 men on the field, Pat. He had two tight ends. One had to get out. They finally did. 13 nothing. Redskins over Broncos. Pat Summerall, John Madden. We're at Mile High Stadium in Denver. Rich Carlos. Now there's a new one, Pat, where the kicker has two helmets, one on his head and one in his hand. Well, the other one has to be for the holder. I don't know why. That's a new deal for kickers. Winder stopped by Butts, a loss of two. Tomorrow here on CBS again, the Giants in the playoffs entertain the Cardinals. They had a tough time with them first time around 13 6 I think with the score. Well if you're going to be a championship team if you're going to be a Super Bowl team like the Giants have a chance to be you can't have trouble with teams like the Cardinals. If you can't beat those guys then you don't belong there. Second down at 12 for the Broncos. Elway back to throw. Steps up. Down the middle intended for Gerald Wilhite. Well covered. Joe Collier on the sideline looking at the Redskin defensive alignments and whatever else concerns him. Well, he's looking to see what the Redskins were doing formation wise. You see now, those are the Polaroids that they took during the first quarter. Those are all the Redskins formations that he has to adjust his defenses to. So he'll have like first down, second down, third and long, third and short, goal line, all the situations on picture. Third and 12. Elway retreats. Into the pocket and out he comes. Into the end zone. Incomplete. He had Vance Johnson. He just couldn't get it to him. He was open and well open. I'll tell you, he drilled that ball. He found Vance Johnson. Vance Johnson has great speed. He's coming across that end zone. But watch, watch Elway and his throw. He gets flushed out. Now when he gets flushed out here he's more dangerous than he is in the pocket. Now he finds Vance Johnson. Watch him drill that. I thought I thought that, the, that he had a chance to get it but he didn't. The ball bounced in front of him. Kubiak is holding. That was his helmet that Carlos had a minute ago. Because Carlos doesn't wear the uh, Kubiak doesn't wear the helmet on the side. Carlos is not good from 48 yards out. And the Redskins still lead 13 to nothing with 749 left to play in the first half. Giving that extra effort makes winners be all you can be sponsored by the U.S. Army. Denver's Gerald Wilhite number 47 truly defines what it is to be a role player. The talented running back never stops hustling. And he is always ready to contribute to his offense in a variety of ways. By always going all out and making extra effort an integral part of his game, Gerald Wilhite is the best he can be. You're reaching deep inside you for things you've never known. It's been tough, rough going, but you haven't gone. We do more before 9 a.m. than most people do all day. Be all that you can hey, First Sergeant. Good morning. Find your future in the army. Redskins 13, Denver nothing. 7.49 left in the first half. There is the NFC's playoff picture. The division leaders, the Giants, Record of 12 and 2. They play the Cardinals tomorrow. The Bears 12 and 2, and the Rams, who have yet to clinch 10 and 4. The best of the rest. Washington, obviously, with an 11 and 3 record, seems uh, almost a certainty to ho host the wild card game, unless the Giants stumble in San Francisco, Minnesota, and Dallas still alive, but just barely. But as I said I think you know, going into the playoffs if you look at the history of the Super Bowl and teams that do the best it's always the teams that are getting better as they're going in. 
And I think that's the most important thing in these last two weeks is these teams that are in already establish themselves as getting better, not just holding on. Rodgers is deep. Schrader fakes to him. Anthony Jones has it bounce to the ground, and he's down. Rick Dennison was the Bronco defender. Mentioned that the Cowboys still mathematically at least, although it's very slim, have a chance to make it to the playoffs. They entertain the Eagles tomorrow. Jones is the man down. And let's see what happens. I tell you, Schrader had great pass protection on that play, but you know, the same thing is happening to Jones that happened to Gary Clark. It was after a drop ball. Then he was not in position. You know, he wasn't expecting that thing. He dropped the ball and then he got that hit on the knee. And that knee is just not supposed to bend like his did. Oh, it's ironic that uh, both of those injuries to the Redskin players happened in about the same spot in the field with the same thing to drop pass. I tell you, that's why they always say you might as well go ahead and catch it because you're going to get hit anyway. Dan Reeves with Gerald Wilhite over on the sideline. The rest of the Broncos, but the Redskins lead this contest 13 to nothing. Injured Redskin player Anthony Jones is still down. The Redskins lead it 13 nothing, but he took a, a vicious hit right on the knee. Well, it was number 55, Rick Dennison. After Jones drops the ball here, doesn't get it, drops it. Look, he's standing there. Now, Dennison, 55, comes in and hits him right on the knee. And it looked like that hit, you know, that foot, the right foot was planted, and he got hit right on the knee. Now the foot didn't give and the only thing that could give is a joint. And they're putting one of those braces right now on Jones's knee. You can see the first thing they want to do is immobilize it. Got a shoe off. Now the bandage. And then the stretcher. While they administer here is the playoff picture in the AFC. The division leaders right now, New England at 10 and 4, Cleveland at that same record, and Denver at 10 and 4. The Jets, as you probably know, lost already today. Their record is now 10 and 5. Cincinnati plays Cleveland tomorrow. They're 9 and 5. And then Kansas City, the Raiders, and Seattle, all with mathematical chances to get into the playoffs. You know, the ironic thing about that AFC, though, is all those top teams that we're talking about for Super Bowl earlier, like the Jets, the Patriots, the Broncos, the Raiders, all those teams lost their last game. There's Gary Clark injured earlier. His left ankle, as you can see. Anthony Jones with a knee problem. I'll tell you, that's the other thing. You know, we talk about going into the playoffs, the things you want you want to be peaking you want to be playing well but then the other thing that you don't want are injuries of course Joe Gibbs already lost Clint Didier he was his starting H back and he had a broken finger and then uh, Anthony Jones replaces him and he gets the knee and so their replacement now will be Terry Orr they're down to two tight ends and the tight end is such a very important part of the Redskin offensive scheme. As you say, along with Donnie Warren, they play two at all times, and that's been their football. Now they only have one in there with three wide receivers. Schrader, draw play to Bryant. Calvin Bryant. Outside the 35, about the 38, Rick Dennison made the stop. Bryant got six. Here goes Anthony Jones headed into the locker room. You know, I think one of the big losses for this Redskin team was Clint Didier because, as Joe Gibbs said, it takes two guys to replace him. One is a receiver. They try and use Orr in the receiving, and then one is a blocker where they tried to use Jones. There is Didier. There's a broken bone in his hand. 
Joe Gibbs is saying he can't block anybody yet. He can catch. Art Monk in motion. Bryant again. Down the sideline, and he lowers and lets go on Steve Foley. Yeah, one thing I, I think we have to mention is the Redskin offensive line took a lot of abuse last week, but they've come back this week. I mean, they have really controlled this defense. Watch this pass protection here. Boom, boom. They got him up there. There it goes. They put Rulon Jones up on Jacoby. He's taking care of that. They're making solid, giving Schrader time so that Kelvin Bryant can do this. Uh, that was a good unload. That, that registered 19. On any scale. Rodgers is in for Bryant now, and Orr is in front of him. Monk is the motion man. Sanders puts line to the right. Rodgers. George Rodgers trying to get to the outside. Does for a moment. Knocked out of bounds by Rick Dennison after he got four. As you look at Rulon Jones there, he's, he's their big pass rusher, leading sacker of the Bronco defensive team. And they move him around. He always plays left end on running downs. And then on the passing downs, they move him to tackle into the other end. That last pass rush, he was over there against Jacoby. This time, he's lining up against May. Second down and six. Redskins leading 13 nothing. 6-15 left to play in the first half. Schrader, all kinds of time. Intended for Monk. The best he could do with that was bat it down. He really fired it. You know, Jay Schrader, when we talked to him last night, he was really a confident guy, wasn't he? I mean, oh, he yeah. was like, you know, no worries, nothing bothers me, yeah. Got to go out to dinner. We met his dad in the lobby. His dad looks like a, a retired defensive nose tackle. <laughs> dad looked like he'd been down there in the pit. Yes, he did. Yeah, big old guy. Jay was just saying, hey, look, I made some bad reads last week. I got to do better. Yeah, but he was kind of laughing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll get him. <laughs> Third down. Broncos on a blitz. Somebody might come clean. It was Monk. Pass is high over his head. Dennis Smith. But again, I'm still impressed with the job. Watch this offensive line. It's a four-man rush plus a safety blitz. But watch how well they pick it up. It's a stunt. They're solid there. They pass everything, pick everything off, and let Schrader gun that thing out there incomplete. Kelvin Bryant did a heck of a job. Zendejas with Schrader holding. This will be from 53 yards out. Steve Cox usually tries him from this far out, but this is Zendejas. Good hold. Not such a good kick. Score remains. 13-0 Redskins, 5.59 left to play first half. That one wasn't even close. That'll make a coach match to see Joe Gibbs. But what we try that one for? <laughs> Next Saturday at 3.45 Eastern Time, CBS Sports presents college basketball and presents two of the premier teams in the country as they battle it out. The Fighting Illini and Dean Smith's Tar Heels of North Carolina. Ranked number five and number six in the country. College basketball next. Right now, pro football. And Elway is down in the arms of Charles Mann. Redskins second sack. That's why you like to have that speed in a defensive lineman. You know that when the quarterback breaks away, he has the speed to get him. And it looks like Mann hurt himself on that play. He asked for help from the sideline. I think he may have caught a foot right in that uh, area there. Man, 6'6", 270. Cook has taken his place, Marcus Cook. On second down, Elway retreats again. Shoulder bothering him. Rich Malott knocked Wilhite out of bounds after enough for a Bronco first down. Redskins leading 13 nothing. Man had to get back in there. You can't. The rule number one in the defensive lineman's playbook is 
never let a quarterback knock you out of the game. I mean, if your quarterback knocks you out of the game, you never get to play again. You can't go dress or shower with the guys. Unless it's humiliation. Oh, terrible. Elway, draw play. To Winder. He crosses into Redskin country. Stopped by Daryl Grant, a gain of four. That's the thing that, you know, that Dan Reeves was talking about, and he's really not getting it today as we see Sandy Winder has rushed four times for 11 yards. He wanted to get back, get a running game going, get a ball control type game going, and, and he hasn't done it yet in his first half. Mobley now, that 265-pounder, is put wide to the right, but they come the other way, or try to, and Winder has got no place to go as Dexter Manley comes crashing through and takes Winder down. Monty Coleman helped him out. Well, you're never going to have a chance if you let penetration come like this. Manley gets five yards into the backfield. He took an inside move on Dave Stuttered. Stuttered stepped to left again to get position, and then Manley took the inside. You always make contact first, then get position. Don't go for position first, because that's what happens to you. You wind up blocking air if you do that against a guy like Manley. Yeah, and then that, that allows penetration. Heck, Manley was five yards in that backfield. Will Height back with Elway. Third down for the Broncos. They need 17 for a first. Mobley. And he's got enough. Big Orson. Hung on. They paid a little bit of a price, too. I'll tell you, they have to because when you get that thing, that locomotive coming across there, it's like a prison break. Watch this thing. I mean, he's he's coming across the field going full go. See him crossing there? Boom, look, it takes three guys. One, two. Oh, that third guy didn't want any part of it. But two guys got him down. Orson from Salem College, 6'5", 256. But he is bigger than that. Well, that's what they weighed. I mean, when they weighed him in two months ago, he's 265 now. Here's Elway back. Has to step up and will have to come out of there. Elway to about the 34. Olkowitz around his ankles, but he scrambled for five. I think one thing, if you talk about this Bronco offense, and Dan Reeves says the problems we've had haven't been the running game with our runners or the passing game with our quarterback or receivers. He said it's just our line. He said we just can't keep the guys healthy. Last week they lost Paul Howard, their starting right guard. And this week they're starting with Mark Cooper, but he says we always have a different group in there, and that group really hasn't gelled He's yet. He's a big sure. believer, and you've got to have confidence in the guy next to you, and that really is a secret. That's the thing, because when you get those stunts, you have to zone them or man them or whatever. And if you don't have confidence, you'll find a guy taking an inside move. You'll find a lot of guys running free. Broncos take another timeout. They only have one remaining. As Elway comes over to talk to his head coach, Dan Reeves, and Gary Kubiak next to him, the backup quarterback. Don't forget to stick around at the half. Brent Musburger, Billy Kilmer, and Craig Morton, two guys very familiar with these two teams, will be in the studio. Also at the half, Will McDonough will chat with the, the Jets' Marty Lyons from the Meadowlands, and Irv Cross will be here with a field report. All that coming up to half, we're at Mile High Stadium, the home of the Broncos. Hey, we were talking about the offensive linemen and and I don't believe you win championships and go to Super Bowl without a solid offensive line. And you know, like this half, the Broncos have only rushed for one yard. And that that type of thing isn't going to get it done. So far, this is the way it's happened. The Redskins lead it at Mile High Stadium, 13-0. Touchdown pass from Schrader to Sanders and a run by Rogers of 15 yards. Those are the two touchdowns. Anthony Jones and Gary Clark injured for the Redskins. And Zendejas missed the first extra point. 
I think that, that one in the middle there where the Redskins have rushed for 84 yards, the Broncos have only rushed for one yard is the story of this first half because that's what both of them wanted to do going into the game. The Redskins have done it, the Broncos haven't. Dan Reeves said we've got to be able to run it. They're behind 13-0. Side and oh, is Vance Johnson nailed by Tim Morrison? And Vance gets up a little slowly. That was interesting. The beginning of that play with Daryl Green going with the man in motion, and then he had to spin around and come back. And I always saw it and got the ball out there. Johnson may not be happy that he did. Hey, watch this hit. He just—he never had a chance. Just as he turned, there was Tim Morrison. I think they're saying that that was a complete pass, Pat. They're spotting the ball right there where Johnson was hit. Redskins are arguing about that. I don't know if he had control of it or not. There it is. Listen. The official indicates the official on the spot indicated yes it was a catch. Yeah but I think they have to look at this one an instant replay. I don't think it was a catch. I don't know that he had control. You have to come down to have control both feet moving up the field. I'm sure they're doing a review right now. Now he has the ball. I don't know. I The word from the booth is that it's inconclusive. What's the official now? Ball goes out of bounds. And that official closest ruled that it was a catch, and the evidence says inconclusive. It's a first down Broncos. Yeah, they always say the official was right on top of it. He was. I don't think that makes him right all the time. Being on top of it doesn't mean it's okay. And before they can resume, we get the two-minute warning. Redskins leading Denver 13 to nothing. Two minutes remaining at Mile High Stadium with the Redskins leading Denver 13 nothing. Two minutes remaining in the first half. The Steelers beat the Jets earlier today. Jerry Seaman is saying start the clock. Let's get things rolling here. Elway as the Broncos operate from the Washington 28. Draw play. Winder. To the 11. Tripped up by Morrison. Gain of 16 and a Bronco first down. Well, there's the run. What they're going to run. Dave Butts takes an inside. They turn out on man, and that's the hole that Sammy Winder goes in. They got butts going to the inside. They got man going to the outside. And then they ran a draw right between them. And they got Will Height in front of Winder blocking on Coleman. Elway back to throw, looking, throwing corner of the end zone. Flags are down. Mark Jackson was the target. Daryl Green was back there with him. They got all tangled up. And flags went down. Well, Daryl Green's in there arguing that it wasn't him, but it's going to go against him. In the end zone, number 28 defense. The ball be placed at the one yard line. First down. Let's look at it. It's going to happen right down here on the slot man. Right there, they go up, they get the bump. Now, watch in the end zone right there. Yeah, Daryl Darryl Green did. He went down for his knee. He gave him like a clipping motion. In fact, they're taking Daryl Green out because it's goal line now, but I've never seen a defensive back react like that. Well, he obviously felt it was going to be touchdown if he didn't do something like that. So he did it. It's Will Height. And it's Bronco touchdown and another flag goes down. I think they're going to throw it against the uh, Redskins, too. I think the touchdown will stand. No, oh, it's against Denver. Oh, they called holding. The 
The Redskins were arguing like it was against them. Holding number 85 offense, still first down. Holding on Joey Hackett. That, he's in motion, watch 85, Joey Hackett. He's coming in motion, blocking on the end man here. I guess he reached with his left arm and grabbed. But he didn't have to do it. No, he didn't. I mean, that's a dumb penalty. All he had to do was bump him because Will Height was already by him. Oh, boy. That makes it first and goal from the 11 now. Elway will go back into the shotgun. This is a play in the play. And Elway gets in. point Rich Carlos Kubiak holding this would make it 13 7 if it's good and that's what it makes it that's a great thing about having a quarterback that can run you can do this what 64 is center Billy Bryan leader Elway comes gets a little block there and then cuts in to the end zone for the touchdown. It's 13-7 Redskins. Okay, here's a good block here. Turn out here. They start on a double here. Turn out here. He has to go in coverage. Elway runs up the middle with his center, Billy Bryan, leading them. I'll tell you who makes a good block is a left guard, Keith Bishop. Turn out, turn out. Follow Brian. Brian gets a little nick there of Jordan, and Elway gets in the end zone. Daryl Grant was screaming that he was held. Well, that was a block I said was a good block. Right. Keith Bishop, number 54. Dwight Garner back deep for the Redskins. Carlos set to kick off. Yarber and Keith Griffin back there with him. New names for the Redskins. Carlos kick is deep to Garner and he'll keep it in the end zone. 13-7. Redskins over the Broncos. Denver nine plays, 65 yards. Kept it 446. Elway took it in from 11 yards out. The other thing about that play, Joe Gibbs said last week when the Giants scored just before halftime, it took all the wind out of them at halftime. And the same thing happened this week. They had complete control of the game. Now with just a little over a minute left, Denver scores, and it's a different ballgame, and that's how they have to go in at halftime. A minute 13 remaining. Redskins with all three of their timeouts remaining. This is Kelvin Bryant. Spins back inside, gets to about the 25. They let the clock run. That's an interesting decision because it looks like with all three timeouts that the Redskins have decided it's 13 to 7. We want to go in at halftime with that. I think, you know, this crowd gets excited, and I think what they want to do is keep them under control, not give the Broncos another big play before halftime. This crowd has come to life now, and they can be very vocal. Schrader just seeing that everybody's got all the information they need, they start monk in motion. 30 seconds remaining. Again, it's Bryant. And a flag goes down. That'll stop the clock. Steve Wilson came over to make the stop after a gain of one. And I would think, even though that does stop the clock, I would think that Denver will start taking timeouts. They've only got one left. But I think with that, uh, you know, that's second down. Now they'll run again. Now I think the Broncos will take the timeout after this play. If it's another running offense. play. Penalty declined. Third down. Hart Monk limps over to the sideline. It was he 
Well, they called for holding. And he's in pain. He was out there trying to block on Steve Wilson, who was the guy that made the play. Third and three. If they don't get the first, I would imagine you're right. The Broncos will take the timeout. They have one remaining. Redskins are just about out of wide receiver. Here's Bryant. He's close. I think that's going to give him the first down. That little spin right at the end, Pat, I think he got the first down. So he the Broncos won't take the timeout. He gained four, and they'll just let it run down now. The Redskins have got right now, as they head for the locker room, as do the Broncos, but Washington has a serious injury problem. They've lost a lot of key people. That's the end of the first half with the score. Washington 13, Denver 7.